Welcome to this introductory video of Xeno Analytics, harvesting the value from advanced analytics. Xeno Analytics is an analytics translator and a data translator. And we help you connect decisions to data by translating advanced analytics to effective action. Analytics add value and you can find the cases all over the internet. It helps increase productivity, like increased marketing response or increased revenue on marketing campaigns, or it can help you manage more people at the same time. It helps improve the customer experience by improving product development, by reducing complaints, by streamlining uh, processes. It helps you reduce operational expenses by cutting out unnecessary actions. It helps prevent risk on credit risk or fraud or cyber risks and streamlining complex processes there is actually a separate line called process mining that will help you identify how i can how you can improve on your business processes and in general it helps you leverage investments that you've done already in your it investments on erp on crm systems on salesforce automate automation systems and on all the data collection that you've put in place but reality isn't that straightforward. It is still a struggle for most companies to, to derive valuable insight from the data that they have. There's also a cultural and organizational problem in adopting <coughs> data-driven decision-making in most organizations. And that leads to only 11% of companies being very satisfied with the results of their investments in data and analytics projects. To generate value from analytics, you need to bring your business process, your IT architecture, and your data together with analytics and try and find the sweet spot. The sweet spot is actually the cross section between those four dimensions where you actually will generate the value. As long as you do not bring it, the, the analytics into your business process, into your decision making process, and use the right IT architecture and data to actually support that, you will never derive value. And we will need to use multiple analytics working together to reach a decision because business decisions are complex. In the example of acquisition, we need to determine whether uh, who is in the tar target area, which channels can we best use, what are the messages we want to use, and are they likely to respond to an offer? And if they respond to it, will they actually buy and for how much? And if they buy, will they pay and when? And if they've bought, will they buy more? And what will they buy? And how long will they target? Because those are all questions that need to be answered to make a right decision on whether you're going to make an offer to someone or not. We need to be agile to do that. We need to continuously learn and adapt. In this slide, you see the OODA loop, the Observe, Orient, Decide and Act loop that John Boyd developed based on the decision-making process of fighter pilots. And in business, it is the same. We need to continuously observe what is happening in the market, what is happening in our organization. We then need to orient where, where are we, where do we need to go, and we need to make decisions, and based on that decisions, we act. But those actions have an effect of the environment, so we need to have feedback loops at every moment in time to actually observe again what is happening. And our business actions are part of our analytics because when we make a decision, we influence the market that we're in and we change the reality that we've built our previous analytics on. To use an example, when I build a uh, retention model to predict which customer is likely to cancel their contract or go to the competition, and I take an action to prevent that, I basically take an action to make my prediction not come true. So the next time around, I need to adapt my analytics for that, and I need to incorporate my own actions into that process. So I also need to build a model that looks at offer acceptance, so not just the likelihood that they're going to go to the competition, but I also need to look at who is actually going to accept the offer. And the next step that I want to do is actually look at, okay, so how are they developing? Does it actually make sense 
for me to to make an offer uh, to keep them, or are they not worth it? Is there a uh, a likelihood that this customer is someone that I do not want to keep? So overall, we continuously need to look at what are we seeing, where are we, how do we want to decide? We take an action, and then we use that feedback loop to make sure that we continuously learn and adapt. We need to go beyond the hype of big data and that it's a silver bullet that will help us be successful with the push of a button. In the uh, beyond the hype, the hard work behind analytic success in MIT Sloan Management Review, there are five points that are very important. One competitive advantage with analytics is waning because if everybody is starting to use analytics, then it becomes more difficult to uh, dis distinguish yourself from your competition. The only way to do that is to actually look at how can I do analytics in my way and how can I leverage the information that I have in my organization best to be um, uh, be better at analytics and better in the market than my competitor. The optimism about potential analytics remains strong because analytics still adds a lot of value. So non-analytic companies will perform less than analytic companies. But the question then also is, do you need to actually perform better than everybody or do you want to perform good enough? So it's also a question uh, about for you about how far do you want to go? What are your priorities? What, what is it that you want to accomplish? Do you want to optimize or do you want to satisfy uh, in, in psychological terms? When you go into analytic, analytics and data-driven decision-making, you need to have a sustained commitment to change the role of data in decision-making. And companies that are successful with analytics have a strategic plan for analytics. They've thought about, okay, how are we going to use it? How does it fit uh, in our organization? And how does it align with our strategy? And it does require investments and cultural change to achieve a sustained success with analytics. It's not just a matter of implementing some technology and loading a lot of data. It does require thinking about how do I actually change my, my decision-making processes and how do I change my organizational processes and how do I actually change my processes interacting with customers, partners and other stakeholders. What we also need to keep in mind is that perfect information does not, not exist. There's many dynamic processes going on in our organization, but also in our environment and in the world. And there's constant change going on. So information and analytics that was true yesterday may not be true tomorrow. Uh, information that was true two years ago may not be true tomorrow. And then maybe it be becomes true again uh, the next week. So we need to make sure that we realize the life cycle of information. Uh, no matter also of the promises that are made by data vendors and by uh, data collection technology vendors and the hype on we can get all the data on the, minute, on, on the internet, we will never have complete data and we will be unable to actually get all the data that is needed. So if we're, for example, looking at a uh, marketing interaction, we will never have the specific information about what is happening with a person reading an email or looking at our website at a specific time, because we would need to take maybe into account what has happened to him that morning uh, at home. We may need to take into account whether he has eaten or not eaten. We need, may need to take into account what the weather is like, and there's all kinds of other uh, data that we will never be able to, to process. We also need to make sure and that, that we understand that humans are emotional decision makers. Whenever we're trying to find a, uh, a new customer or we want to approach a customer, we, we need to take into account that there is a certain level of unpredictability in their behavior. Um, and therefore, we will never be perfect. All the data that we're using are also subjective. There has been a choice in. There have choices been made in, uh, in what data to store, how to store them, 
Uh, there is uh, data if we collect it from the internet that is subjective because we will never have all the opinions of all the people on Facebook or Twitter. And then there is a lot that science, mathematics and logic cannot tell us. Especially there is limitations that what we can do on a, on a technical perspective, but there is also limitations on a uh, moral and philosophical pr perspective. There is no way that science, mathematics and logic can tell us what is morally right or what is uh, the right way to go. Uh, so a good uh, book on that for people that are interested is The Outer Limits of Reasons, which is depicted here. What we also need to uh, understand is that algorithms make mistakes. Algorithms are basically computer programs and computer programs can go wrong and, and the development of computer programs can be wrong. There's of course some, some famous examples from, uh, from Facebook and the Google algorithm that misclassified people on face recognition based on their race. Um, and uh, so there's a, a, a good reason to to question algorithms and to monitor them and to actually be very wary uh, about uh, the perfect algorithm you always need to monitor okay what are the limitations of the, this algorithm the other thing is that algorithms are not neutral they're always defined with a business goal in in mind and business goals are based on assumptions and priorities but also emotions and then there are choices made. There are choices made in the techniques and in the design and programming and in the inputs. And then also how to translate the output of a, an algorithm, which usually is a technical output. How do I actually translate that output to a decision? And lastly, you might have rogue algorithms also in your organizations. You might have algorithms that have mistakes in them because they're not developed correctly. Or you have algorithms in your organization that might be using data that you do not want and that might have a an effect that you do not want for example they might be discriminatory or they might actually miss out on certain opportunities because they are too limited they're translated in an incorrect way into your business business decision so another book that is very useful to read in this respect is weapons of math destruction uh, uh, displayed here if you're interested just overall, we need to remember the uh, advice from, uh, from Box and Draper. Um, remember that all models are wrong. The practical question is how wrong do they have to be not to be useful? So we always need to question models because models are always incomplete and wrong interpretation of reality, but they deliver us useful information that will help us make better decisions. But we need to keep in mind that they need to be challenged, they need to be monitored, they need to be governed, and that they need to be um, reviewed on a regular basis. So the question is, how do you want to make your decisions? What are your organization's ethics and values? Do they put any limitations on the type of analytics that you want to perform or the type of data that you want to collect? What are your strategic objectives? Do you want to have long-term growth or do you want to have short-term gains? Do you want to have long-term customer relationships or do you just want to maximize your, your volume? And how do you want to perceive your, your, your brand to be perceived in the market? What is it that you want to do with analytics? How far do you want to go? Do you want to expose yourself to possible negative press like it was, happened with Facebook or Cambridge Analytica or with others? How do you decide on the boundaries of analytics in your, in, your, um, in your organization? How far do you want to go with analytics and, and where is the, uh, the limit? And then how do you plan to govern decision making in your organizations? How do you actually keep control as business over the decisions being made instead of basically making it possible for technical analysts to make decisions for you and thereby losing control of how your organization is making decisions but also you run the risk of non-compliance with new legislation going on around using analytics in organizations like the gdpr 
Uh, and then how are you going to organize it? Are you going to organize it as a center of expertise that works with all partners? Or do you work with a hub and spoke model where you have analytics deployed into different functions? How are you actually going to maybe break down the silos between different areas so that you have finance and marketing together to make sure you're not marketing to to customers that are unlikely to pay their bills uh, or maybe you want to make sure that your marketing and supply chain are uh, working together so that when you send out a, a, a marketing campaign or start a marketing campaign you make sure that your supply chain uh, demand optimization is aligned to that marketing campaign um, and how can you actually then best leverage business knowledge in your decision making process how do you actually deploy it into your process it, that also depends on what type of decisions you're making so do you want it as visualizations do you want it as reports do you want it as an integration into your website do you want it integrated into your your marketing platforms so how is it actually that you're going to bring the data the business the IT platform and the analytics together to generate the value Xeno Analytics helps you answer those questions by running executive workshops on analytics strategy. We also offer an analytics acumen assessment, which is a project to identify and define analytics use cases in your organization to help you improve business outcomes and a roadmap for implementation on a step-by-step -step incremental basis to make sure that you learn while you implement and you can adapt and learn on analytics in your organization. We also offer analytics process review to review your current analytics processes and see whether the current processes align with the business goals stated, uh, which data are being used, whether the analytics employed are optimal and whether the deployment in the business process is the best way forward. And finally, we help you design analytics solutions in your organization and manage the implementation. I want to thank you for your attention. My contact details are on the slides. My name is Jaap Fink, Xeno Analytics.